At some point, you may come into possession of a really lovely yarn that feels like butter in your hands and is made up of some of the most beautiful and luxurious fiber content. However, the only thing holding you back from using that yarn is its color. In today's video, we are venturing out into the Fiber for the People dye studio to over dye some yarn to something just a little bit more suitable to preference. So if you're up for a little over dyeing adventure, grab a cup of something cozy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I have something a little bit different for you guys today. Now, the reason for this video is because I have been in possession of some really lovely cashmere yarn that was sent to me by a viewer about four and a half years ago. I want to say it was 2018. 2019. I can't remember, but I know that it was around that time. So about that long ago, I received an email from this lovely viewer and she asked me if I would be willing to take a stab at over dyeing some really lovely cashmere yarn that she had that she just wasn't going to use in its current color. Now at the time, Fiber for the People was a very new business. I was doing well, but I was new. I didn't have the workload that came shortly thereafter. Things weren't quite is hectic. And I was also looking for really fun and inspiring ideas for yarn dyeing videos here on the channel. And I felt like it was a really fun opportunity to experiment with something and to give back. Shortly after sending this yarn and receiving this yarn, things for fiber for the people, my hand dyed yarn business, really took off in ways that I was not expecting. And that kind of goes into part of the story a little bit. I hadn't figured out a really good time to pencil in that video and to film the video and produce the video. All in all, that particular project got put to the back burner. I tucked the yarn away in a safe place in my office, wrapped in plastic and labeled so that I knew exactly what it was and what it was for. The days went by, I became busier and busier and regrettably, I never got around to over dyeing this yarn for this person. I have a lot of feelings about this. I carry a lot of guilt about allowing it to sit and not doing the thing that I said I would do, not penciling in, producing the video. There's a lot to unpack with this particular bundle of yarn. Well, not long ago, this particular viewer reached out to me asking me, what became of the yarn that she sent me those years ago. And it lit a fire under me like you wouldn't believe. In fact, it wasn't a matter of not knowing where this person's yarn was. I have known full well where the yarn is. I've kept it very safe and labeled in my office, even keeping it in a very particular location in this new office when we moved into this house in 2020. The email shook me and made me realize that I owed something to someone and I needed to take care of it. And so I pulled out the yarn, I laid it out, I took it from ball to skein, and I decided it was time to give it a fresh coat of paint. I want to share a little bit of that process with you here today and give you a little bit of insight into the process of over dyeing yarn. I want to let you know this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial and there's a lot that goes into this process that I know I am not going to touch on in this video. However, I hope that if in the future you decide you would like to over dye your own yarn, this video gives gives you at least a jumping off point. So without further ado, let's head out to my dye studio and see what we have going for us. Hello and welcome to the Fiber for the People dye studio or the garage of my home. This is where I dye all the yarn for Fiber for the People yarn and today this is where I'm going to show you how you can over dye yarn that just doesn't seem to be speaking to you in terms of color. Now there are times when we purchase yarn, whether it's a sweater quantity that we purchased a while ago and we allowed to sit in our stash for quite some time or it was yarn that was gifted to us or it's just something that for whatever reason the color is no longer doing it for us and we need to have an alternative and sometimes that alternative can be to de-stash that yarn donate it to somebody who you know can use it or if you're a little bit more on the adventurous side you can over dye that yarn yourself in your own home and have something completely new to work with other than the dye and the citric acid that you're going to need to use to dye your yarn, all of the other tools and supplies can be purchased really cheaply at a thrift store. If you're planning on doing this occasionally, and this is not going to be something that you break into as a serious hobby or even a hobby slash job, you really don't need to spend a lot of money on this. So definitely keep that in mind when I share with you what you're going to need to over dye some yarn. First thing you're going to need is the yarn in question. And the yarn that 
I have here is the yarn that was sent to me by this lovely viewer. So we have our yarn. The next thing that you're going to need is something to dye the yarn in. Now today we're using a hotel pan. This is just, let me show you an example. This is a full-size hotel sheet pan that I use for dyeing large, well, larger than this batches of yarn for fiber for the people. You could use something as simple as a stock pot, and it definitely doesn't even need to be this size of stock pot, but this stock pot would absolutely do. It just needs to hold the amount of yarn that you're dyeing with enough room for the yarn to move around in the vessel. In addition to that, you're going to need something like a spoon that you can use to stir your dye stock. You're going to want to have a pair of tongs, some basic measuring spoons, a basic set, or even just a couple measuring spoons in the quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon capacity is perfectly fine. Some form of vessel that you can use to mix your dye stock. These paint mixing cups are real cheap at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your hardware store is. But honestly, if you go to a thrift store, an old measuring cup, just anything that can hold up to boiling water, really hot water, and that you can mix your dye stock in is perfectly fine. A mason jar works well as well. Prior to dyeing your yarn, you're going to want to soak the yarn to allow it to fully saturate with water. And you can do that a couple different ways. You can do that in your sink, you can do that in your bathtub, but you can also use a bucket. I have lots of these buckets as this is something that I do quite often with lots of yarn. I have the yarn for today's soaking in this bucket. You can get these buckets at a hardware store. You probably have them on hand. It doesn't need to be anything special. You're not mixing any dye in this, so it's just going to have water and your yarn. Now, when it comes to mixing your dye stock, you're obviously going to need some dye. Now, you can purchase the same kind of dye that I and many other yarn dyers use at a few different places, which I will link down below in the description box. One of the places where I purchase the dye for my shop is Dharma Trading Company. They create some really gorgeous, vibrant colors for wool, silk, protein, and nylon fibers. This is an example of what they look like. This is a much larger quantity. If you're planning on doing this just for your occasional over dye, you absolutely do not need this much yarn dye. Something much smaller will work. In fact, another company that I've used in the past and that I do tend to use a lot even now is Pro Chemical and Dye. You can purchase wash fast, light fast acid dye there as well in small quantities like this one here that might be a little bit more manageable for what it is that you're trying to do here today. Now, it's important to keep in mind when I use the term acid as it relates to acid dye, what I'm referring to there is the fixative that's going to cause the dye to adhere to the fiber. And the type of acid I prefer to use for all fiber for the people yarn and what I'm going to be using here today is citric acid. This is a relatively small bucket for what I typically use of citric acid. You can purchase citric acid at the grocery store. It's used, I believe, in uh, preserving fruits and various different things like that, making candy. It's a really common ingredient. You can pick up the amount that you need, more than enough, at your grocery store. It's easy to come by. You can also purchase it on Amazon. But we're gonna be using citric acid today as the fixative for the dye to help it adhere to the yarn. In terms of your water, you're going to need to have access to boiling water to mix your dye stock. And then of course, you're going to need to have access to a burner of some kind. Now that can be your stove in your kitchen. What we're doing today is a pretty minimal application of yarn dye. You're not gonna be creating a dye studio in your kitchen. It's relatively simple. So it is safe using proper precautions to mix a small amount of dye and dye yarn in your kitchen using your stove because we're working with such a small volume of yarn here. And I'm going to be mixing my dye behind you over at my dye mixing station, which is my sink. I will show you that in just a moment. And when I do that, I will be using a kettle of boiling water. Now, in addition to the tools and the dye and all of those things that you're going to need to do this, you definitely need to take some precaution to protect your skin, to protect your lungs from the materials that you're going to be using. Now the dye that I link to down below from Pro Chemical and Dye and Dharma Trading Company is safe to be used in a recreational sense or a hobby sense like we're doing here today. And it's also excellent to use in a professional sense as well. There are some stronger forms of dye that you can 
can venture into, but the ones I'm linking you down below are the best ones to use for this sort of application. It is really important to understand though that the dye that you're using comes in the form of a dry powder with fine particles, and like anything that is a dry powder that you're going to be working with, you really don't want to inhale it. And I would encourage you to take the same precautions. And so what that means is to have something to cover your hands and to have something to cover your mouth and nose. Now this could be overkill for you if this is the only time you plan on over dyeing your yarn. But because I dye yarn in larger volume than this, I like to have a good respirator mask just like this to keep things protected. I also use latex gloves or any kind of rubber glove. I actually believe that these are latex free. Yeah, these are just nitrile gloves. If you're allergic to latex, you don't have to use them, but these are latex free gloves. I get them on Amazon, they're fantastic. You can also use dishwashing gloves if you'd like, something to protect your hands. For something as simple as what we're doing today and because you are not mixing a large volume of dye stock, even a simple medical mask that covers your nose and mouth would work fine or a painter's mask as well. These are a little bit more on the price end. Those are relatively cheap and they are just fine for something like what we're doing here today. An apron is optional. I use my apron to protect my clothing. You can also just wear some drabby clothes. I also want to mention that all of the tools that you use for dyeing yarn with the types of dyes that we're using here or any dyes to speak of, you do not want to use those for cooking, for food, or for anything that is going to come in contact with food. It needs to be put away someplace where you know that those are tools for dyeing only. So now that we know what we need, let's talk a little bit about how I want to approach over dyeing this particular color of yarn and what kinds of things I'm going to consider before I start. Now, one big thing that you need to consider before over dyeing any color is color theory. I work with color theory a lot in my work out here in the dye studio when I'm coming up with new colorways, when I'm thinking of mixing colors together, I really have to think about how various different colors go together and mix together and what I'm going to get when I mix two colors together. And that is really important here because we're already working with one established color. So anything we dye over the top of this is going to be a form of color mixing. And we need to know that by adding a color over the top of this, we're not just going to muddy the color and end up with brown. Unless of course, brown is what you're going for. However, I don't wanna take a color like this to brown because I feel like that's not doing the color that we already have established here justice. Try to work with what you have, even though that color may not be to your liking, a little bit left, a little bit right, south or north of this color may actually be just the ticket. So don't completely abandon the idea of this color altogether and think that you're going to just slap a Band-Aid on it and have something completely new. It's not really going to work like that. So it's really important to take the color that you already have and embrace it a little bit and think how you can enhance it in your eyes by adding colors that complement it. So what I'm thinking about doing here is kind of venturing around the same arc of the color wheel that this would already sit on and adding some colors to kind of enhance the green that we have here. Maybe give it a little bit of a different tone, maybe give it a slightly different hue as I work my way around the color wheel, but I'm not trying to change it entirely because I need to embrace the color that is already here. Now, I would say that the color that we have, if I'm looking at this particular color wheel here, I would say that this color, I'm gonna come over here, sits about right there on my color wheel. So I'm kind of looking at the lower end of this green portion of my color wheel here. And it just shows that it has a little bit more of a deep tone to it. It's not as bright as what I have up here. It's just more deep, which means there's more gray and maybe even a little bit of blue in this green. It is a rather blue green. If you really look at it, it's not yellow green, but it does sit there a little bit more in a deep position on this portion of the color wheel. And I think what I want to do, I don't want to go light because going light is over the top of something that's already dark is not going to give you guaranteed positive results. I mean, I can't guarantee what this is going to look like at all, but I'm less confident by trying to go light. I can't remove color and by adding a lighter color over a darker color in this application, I'm not necessarily going to get a lighter result. And so I feel like I want to go more towards the blues. And if I'm sitting about right here on this portion of the color wheel, I'm going to move over just a little bit this way. I'm 
thinking it would be kind of fun to explore taking us somewhere between these colors right here. Something in the blue green category. And then from there, I'm thinking that I want to add just a smidgen of gray, maybe even a little bit of black to really add some depth and intentional grittiness to the color. Now, I don't say grittiness to mean, um, I don't, that, that, that kind of comes off as being a little bit harsh. I just mean that I want to add some depth and character to what would be otherwise just a blue green color. I want it to have a little bit of moodiness. All that being said, let's go ahead and mix some dye and see what we can come up with. Okay, now, as I had mentioned, I want to try and move this direction on the color wheel. I don't wanna move this way because adding lighter colors to what I already have right now is not necessarily, I don't know, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I do. I know that if I try to go here, what would happen is I would get a much deeper version of what I have right here, which could be fine, it could be lovely, but I just don't know if I'm willing to do that yet. I just, I don't know, I'm a little nervous about it. I have some thinking to do. Okay, it is decided. I've done some digging around in this particular person's Ravelry account. Um, checking out the patterns that they've knit in the past, their favorite colors as it shows on their Ravelry profile. And I believe the right direction to go is this way. I am going to move towards blue tones as opposed to these more uh, yellowy green tones down here. I feel like that's not only safe, it's just wise because I just think that this is generally speaking, and I know somebody's probably gonna correct me down in the comments, this is more to this is this is more pleasing to a lot of people um and so i just want to stick to that it mentions in her ravelry profile that her favorite color is aubergine or eggplant which is my favorite color so i feel like moving closer towards that realm is a good way to go no i'm not going to get to that place because we're starting with green but adding blue i think is a safe bet and so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to add some blue and then i think i'm going to add some moodiness and depth with a little bit of gray or black okay so i have some tools here I have some dye. I have my vessel for mixing the dye. And we're ready to go. So the colors I've chosen to go with here are by Pro Chemical and Dye. This is the color Brilliant Blue. This, let me show you. Now, when it's mixed at one and a half percent of the weight of the goods, that means whatever the weight is of the items that you're going to be dyeing, you mix this at a one and a half percent ratio, essentially. And when this is mixed to that ratio, which I am not going to be doing math to determine that, I'm just going to be eyeballing things, it should look like what you see here, this little one right there. So that is brilliant blue. Now, in addition to Brilliant Blue, I'm using Dharma Trading Company Twilight Gray. This is a deceiving color, my friends. I love it very much, but it is definitely more on the purple side. And I feel like it has enough gray in there to help tone down the color, but there's enough purple in there too to add a little bit of a boost to the blue undertone or overtone that we're adding here. So that's Twilight Gray. And then my friend is Toner Black, my favorite black. Um, out of all the blacks I use. Toner Black by Dharma Trading Company is fantastic. And we're gonna use just a teeny bit of this to tone the overall color down. So let's go ahead and get to mixing. Now I'm going to begin with the main color. So this is going to be the main hue that I'm using. And these additional colors here, the gray and the black are my toners. So I'm going to begin with the main hue and then I'm going to move to the gray and then I'm going to move to the black. We're going to start with one fourth teaspoon of Brilliant Blue. I'm going to move to 1 16th teaspoon Twilight Gray. And at this point, I'm not even going to add the black yet. I kind of want to see what happens with what I have here so far. I'm going to add my boiling water to this, give it a good mix, and add it over to my pan. 
one of these little milk frothers is a great thing to have if you find that this is something you're going to want to do as a hobby. It's, they're relatively inexpensive and it mixes up your dye really, really easily. Otherwise, you'd have to be using a little whisk or a fork or some kind of a stirring mechanism and giving it a good stir for quite some time. Let's go ahead and add this to my dye bath. Now, this is my dye bath here. A lot of times, folks will soak their yarn in a solution of water and citric acid, and then they will create a dye bath like this. And before adding the dye, they will add citric acid to give it the acidic nature. I'm going to tell you right now, and this is what I do for all of my solid colors, do not soak your yarn beforehand in citric acid and do not add citric acid to the dye bath until later. By doing it this way, you're allowing a really slow and gradual uptake of dye into the fiber without rushing the process and creating splotchy or uneven layers of dye. Now, sometimes that can be what you're going for if you're creating something tonal, but for the sake of today, I want it to be as even as possible. So I don't want to rush that uptake of dye any more than I have to. So this is room temperature water. There is no acid here and there's no acid in the soaking yarn where the yarn is right now. We're gonna just leave that off until later. So the first thing I wanna do right now is go ahead and add the dye stock that I created with that blue right here into the dye bath. Now from the looks of this, this is going to give us some really nice saturation. It's a good, rich and deep blue. It doesn't have that moodiness and depth yet. Like I was going, well, I, like I think I'm going for with that black and that's because I obviously haven't added it yet, but I think this is a really great start. So we're going to add that green yarn into this dye and it's going to kind of immediately give us an idea of what we have. And then we just have to let it take up the color before we can make any other decisions. Okay, I have about 250 grams of this yarn going in now. And I'm already starting to see and get a little bit of an idea of how it's going to look with that blue it may end up taking more than what I have in here, but we shall see. So I'm gonna show you here a little bit closer. You can kind of see the blue in that kind of over the top of that green. And it's already starting to go to a much more blue place when it's submerged under the water. And as it starts to take up the dye, it'll become even more so. But I can tell just by looking at this that I'm going to need to add more. Now, it's always easier to add more than it is to take it away. Uh, it's impossible to take it away, quite honestly. So this is a good place to be because now from what we have here, we can see what it is that we need to do next. And I think that is to deepen this color that we've established here by maybe doubling it up. So adding another batch of that color. And then I think I'm gonna add some of that moodiness by using the black. Okay, I have added a little bit more of that same blue dye stock. I like what I'm seeing so far. It's giving it a little bit more of that blue overtone that we're having here. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna turn on the heat and I think I'm gonna probably only take this to just under a simmer. I don't think I'm gonna need to get it too hot to get all of this dye to fix to the yarn. I think it's gonna work rather quickly. So I'm gonna let it sit, let it get to temperature, and just let it absorb that dye for a while before I even think about adding any kind of citric acid here. Okay, I am looking at what I have here and I like the direction that it's going, but I feel like I need a deeper blue. Now, we're not gonna see a lot of dye in the yarn as of yet. I'm noticing the tone is, or the hue is changing just ever so slightly, but I need some color in here that is just, it's just richer and deeper. And so instead of, entertaining too much the idea of adding black to this, I think what I want to do is go with a blue that is just by nature a little bit more moody and dark. And I have here a really gorgeous indigo blue color that I think might do just the trick. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my dye bath and see where that takes us. Now this has been sitting at heat for about 20 minutes now. Um, and there's no acid in here. So there's nothing that's gonna get this color to fix to the dye besides the heat at this point, and that's fine. That's what I want. I want this to be very gradual, and I want the heat to also be very gradual. There's no bubbling going on. There's no steaming. 
Um, it's just everything is very gradual, but I can still see based on what I have in the bath right now that I'm going to need more depth. So let's go ahead and add this indigo blue dye. Okay, by doing that, I'm already seeing a pretty significant uh, deepening of the tone here, which is great. I'm seeing that it's becoming a little bit more rich throughout, and that's excellent news. That's kind of going where I want it to go. I can tell from what I see here, this is going to retain that mother color, that you know established color, that green, but it is definitely going to be transformed into something beyond just green and that's great. So we're still kind of honoring what it already was while enhancing it a little bit with new colors. Whoops, making a little bit of a mess. That's why I'm doing this outside. Okay, so I am looking at this and I'm thinking that we're really getting someplace beautiful here. I am gonna pull just a little bit of this out and give it a squeeze so that I can see. Yeah, that looks fantastic, actually. So it's a little bit more bright than what you see in the water, obviously, when I let some of that water out and squeeze it, you can see it coming through. And I love that. There's still some more color in the water that needs to get taken up into the yarn. So now is a great time to add some citric acid to kind of help it along. And then I think I am still going to add a little touch of either dark gray or black to kind of add a little bit of moodiness and depth to this. But let's go ahead and add a little bit of citric acid first. Now, when it comes to citric acid, you really don't need to go crazy. A teaspoon, a couple of teaspoons is really all you need for something like this. It is pretty powerful. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle this right over the top like this. And then right after you do that, you're going to wanna get that kind of moved around into the water. If you're using an untreated yarn, you wanna be really gentle when you do this so you don't felt your yarn. Just kind of work it into the water. Go like this, it kind of helps to suck it down underneath the yarn and you're good to go. So I'm gonna leave that to see if I can't get the rest of this or at least a good majority of what I have here into the yarn before I add that other toning color. All right, it looks like a lot of that blue is getting um, absorbed into the yarn. So now is a really great time for me to add a little bit of that toning dye stock to add some depth and moodiness to what I have here. And I'm super excited to do that. So I'm gonna lift this out, pour this in. It's a little bit of leftover from the blue that I used here, plus a little bit of black. Nothing crazy, just enough to add a little bit of a depth to the color. That should absorb into the yarn pretty quickly, just leaving it just as it is right now. Okay, so there is that. Loving this so far. I'm gonna put a lid on here and we wait. Okay, so I have had this sitting now for an additional 15 minutes. You can see that there's a very pale blue left in the water. There's, it looks a little like, the best way to do this is to take your tongs and stick them down into the water. And that kind of gives you an idea of how much dye still remains in the water. It's deceiving if you just look at it straight like that. So here, we can see here, looking at this, the water is relatively clear and that indicates to me that it is time to remove heat from this. The heat has done its job. As you allow the yarn to cool, the remaining dye will fix to the yarn in that cooling process and finish everything off. So now I'm going to come over here. We're gonna turn off the heat completely. I'm gonna keep the lid on here, let it cool down 
to room temperature and then it's time to wash it. Here we are, we are back. Okay, I'm ready to share with you what we have, what the final result was of this particular over dye. And I wanna thank you for coming on this journey with me and to the lovely viewer who sent this yarn to me. Um, not only thank you for allowing me this opportunity, um, thank you for your grace and your overwhelming patience. Uh, it means a lot to me and I'm really excited to get this back out to you. Okay, enough of that. Here is the result of our over dye. Now remember, I was trying to work more towards the blue as opposed to the yellow and vegetal green colors as I felt like it was just going to be more in line with what this individual may prefer. So, and here is our new yarn. Look at how beautiful that is, you guys. This is not all of it. There's still some that is uh, drying out there right now, but this I pulled out to show you. And I am so excited about it. It was exactly where I was going with this. I wanted it to have a depth to it, a richness to it. I wanted there to be a moodiness to the hue. You can see that in the yarn. It's definitely very moody. It's like this really rich, teal blue color and in some places you can see the original color shining through there i don't know if you can pick that up but it's really really lovely like right in here you can kind of see that original color shining through and it's gorgeous i have a skein of yarn here this is a mini skein it was a lucky strike color and it's pretty close to that original color um, this is a little deeper than that original clover green, but it's pretty close. So I pulled it out just so I could show you a quick comparison in my hand of what we have. So by adding those really, really rich blue hues, we got this really gorgeous teal blue situation happening here. And then, like I said, I went back and I added a deeper indigo blue and some black to give it that nice depth. Oh, and I'm so happy with this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So pretty. So there you have it, guys. A little bit of thought, a little bit of understanding of color theory, and a little bit of understanding what this particular individual may like led us to this really gorgeous colorway. I think it's just fantastic. Oops. I am so excited to package this up and send it off. Now, I do want to remind you, um, this is not a service I offer. This was a very unique um, instance that I agreed to several years ago. This is a special case, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. But any further over dyeing from here on out will be for my own personal over dye experimentation. <laughs> All right, guys, again, thank you so much for joining me for this little journey, this midweek ramble. If you took value from this video or enjoyed yourself at any point, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, definitely subscribe and click the bell icon for more content every Wednesday and every Sunday. And until Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.